Hi everyone, Dom Designs here and welcome back to the channel. I have been receiving many comments on my recently popular how to create cars and illustrator videos on how I create the wheels. So in today's video, I decided to go ahead and show you in real time, step by step, how to create any wheel vectors in Adobe Illustrator using my methods. By the way, if you enjoyed this video or you're interested in Adobe Illustrator tutorials and process videos, then please subscribe and drop a like on my channel. So without further ado, let's get into this tutorial. I went ahead and created a 1920 by 1080p pixel document in Illustrator. I also brought in a screenshot I found on Google of a wheel. I will leave the link in the description below so you can find this image. Let's head over to the layer panel and rename this layer to template. I will also check on the template option, which dims down the opacity of the layer and locks it. I will now create a layer above it and name it outline. This is where the line work will take place. It's important to name your layers in order to stay as organized as possible. For the outline, let's use a black stroke with a 10 points thickness and rounded caps and corners. Make sure you have fill turned off. Let's begin by selecting the ellipse tool. You can press the letter L on your keyboard to activate it. From the center of the wheel reference, let's create a circle. I hold down Shift and Option on my keyboard when creating it. I will now create a duplicate of this circle. You can go to the Edit menu at the top and do a copy and paste in front. To go quicker, I like to use the hotkeys Command C and then Command F. Now let's resize this circle to fit the rim. I'm going to keep doing this process to create multiple circles within the wheel. Just keep doing copy and paste in front and resizing by holding Option and Shift on your keyboard. Alright, now that we have all the circles completed, let's create the spokes. Select the rectangle tool, you can press M on your keyboard to activate it. And from the middle point, I will create a rectangle. Once the rectangle is completed, I will use a direct selection tool to refine it. With this tool, you can click on anchor points and move them over like so. I will then slightly round off the top corners. As you can see from the reference image, the wheel has six spokes. So we will have to duplicate copies of this rectangle six times around the wheel. For this, I will activate the rotate tool. You can press the letter R on your keyboard to activate it. While having the first spoke selected, we will option click at the center point. This will bring up a box. Since a circle has 360 degrees, we will need to divide that number by 6, giving us 60. So let's go ahead and type in 60 and then press on copy. Now, all we have to do next is use the hotkeys Command or Control D multiple times until we have 6 spokes. Easy, right? Let's start merging some shapes together. Select the six spokes we created and the circle that overlaps right here. Then head over to your Pathfinder panel. If you can't find it, go to the Windows menu at the top and you will find Pathfinder. We will select the Unite option to merge our shapes together. The wheel is really starting to form. To give this a little detail, you can use the direct selection tool to curve these edges like so. Now it's time to clean up the overlapping lines. As you can see here, the lines of the spokes with the circles are overlapping. So let's select the circle and the spokes and bring up the shape builder tool. To activate it, you can press shift plus M on your keyboard. By hovering over the overlapping line, Hold the option on your keyboard and carefully select the line to delete it. As you can see, it deleted the overlapping line. Let's do this for the other spokes. And look at that, we have the rim completed. I'll create another circle here in the middle by duplicating the small one. We can now create what we call our bolts. So. Create a black circle at the center point, 
According to the reference image, we need five bolt pattern. So as we did earlier, we will select the rotate tool and duplicate the circle five times around. For that, I will type in 72 as my unit and click on copy. Then you can do Command or Control D on your keyboard multiple times to copy it around. And finally, let's select them all, right click and group. You can do Command or Control G on your keyboard. For the next step, we will create the tire threads. Head over to the bottom of the wheel and at the center point, create a line using the pen tool. You can press the letter P on your keyboard to activate it. We will then use the width tool to taper off the line. You can press shift plus W on your keyboard to activate that. Let's click and drag on the line to make it thinner at the top. And with the direct selection tool, I will angle off the line. Now let's duplicate the shape around our wheel. As we did earlier, select the shape and activate the rotate tool. Option click in the middle. Give it a 10 degree angle and then press on copy. Finally, hit Command or Control D multiple times until the shape has been duplicated around the wheel. To keep things as clean as possible, I will select the tire threads and group them by doing Command G on my keyboard. Alright, so we've completed the line work for the wheel. The next step is to make sure that everything is separated into individual shapes. This will allow us to easily color in the illustration later on. For starters, I will select and lock some shapes, like the tire thread, the bolt pattern, and the middle circle. To lock shapes, you can press Command or Control 2 on your keyboard. Then, I will select all and bring up the Shape Builder tool. I will then click on every gray area shape. I will click on the tire and the different areas of the rib. And now, this is very important. I will hold Option on my keyboard and you will see the cursor will have a minus sign. This means I will be deleting shapes. So I will click on these areas here to make sure there is no shape. This is important because when we add color, we don't want the shape to be colored in. It has to be see-through, since that area is technically just a hole. Once we're done, you will notice that when you pull the shapes apart, they're all separated individually. Amazing, so we're done the outline, so let's give it some color. As always, create a new layer and name it color, and make sure this layer is below the outline layer. Very easily, select for example the tire shape and copy the shape down to the color layer. You can do this by holding option on your keyboard and dragging the red square down to the color layer. What this did is create a direct copy of the shape on a new layer. And select the shape on the color layer, remove its stroke and fill it in with a gray tone from the color swatch. Basically just repeat this process until you have fully laid down the base colors. I'm going to give this wheel a gold color. For the next step, let's add a shadow beneath the wheel. Create a new layer, name it shadow, and create an oval shape. Give that shape a great tone. Alright, so now's the time to add shadows and highlights. Let's begin with the tire. I'm going to select the tire shape and do a copy and paste in front twice. You can do Command C and then Command F twice. We now have three layers of the same shape. Let's move over the top shape to the right like so. As you can see, it created this half moon gap. Next, I will select the top two shapes and activate the shape builder. 
Holding Option on my keyboard, I will delete these unnecessary shapes, leaving behind this half moon shape. And then I'll give this shape a lighter gray tone to represent a highlight. Let's take this shape and copy it over to the left of the wheel. For that, you can activate the Rotate tool. At the center, Option click, rotate to your desired spot, and confirm by clicking on Copy. Change the color to a dark gray for the shadow. Let's repeat this step to create all the shadows and highlights inside the circle. Give the inner rim a dark yellow tone. To create some cool shadows and highlights on the spokes, I will create an oval and place it like so. I will then copy this oval using the rotate tool, like we've done so many times in this video. Make sure you give it a 60 degree angle and then click on copy. Press command D multiple times to duplicate it around. I'll give some of these circles a lighter tone to make a highlight. To add a few more details, I will repeat the same steps. And there you have it everyone, this is how to create a car wheel from start to finish in Adobe Illustrator. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below. Cheers everyone!